God has been so good to me. And I know you as his child. He has been so good to you. You know, many don't realize what they're missing. And by not serving the Lord and giving their whole heart, soul, and mind unto him. You know, we let our flesh rob us of, of more and more of God's spirit that he is putting and filling his people with. You know, them that are pressing in, God is doing mighty works in their life. God is doing mighty things in them. And I, I tell you, I, I just appreciate God for what I see is taking place in many lives. And, and them that's getting down to business with God and not playing church. You know, God has anointed ones that are going forth and preaching his name, Jesus, to everywhere he sends them. And God is moving and breaking yokes and, and bringing forth deliverance and seeing demons being cast out. And my goodness, by the powerful hand of God. And if you're anointed one of God, I tell you what, pay that price that Jesus said to pay. Give your life unto him. Lay down your life and pick up your cross and follow after him. And you'll see God use you greatly in this hour. But I'm going to go to the word of the Lord in prayer. And and before I go into this word, and and I, I just want you to be strengthened and encouraged today, children of God. Because the Lord loves you. He wants to lift you up. He's wanting to help us. You know, many find themselves in messes every day because they've allowed themselves to grow weak in God and, and not uh, consecrated their life unto Him. Let their prayer life go and, and let reading and studying the Word go. And they put things first in their life that they shouldn't have. But you know, the Lord is wanting to help you out of, out of that. He's wanting you to... Uh, to encourage you and strengthen you and set you in a place that you will be firmly planted and unmovable in him. God loves you. He, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ, he laid down his life. He was on that cross and shed his blood for us. You know, he died that we might be saved, that we might be delivered and cleansed and restored back to the Father. Lord, I love you today. I appreciate you. I magnify you, precious Lord. Oh, hallelujah, God, I love you, I praise you, I thank you for your keeping power, Lord. Lord, it is you that sustains us, God, it is you that keeps us. Oh, Lord, even as we walk through the midst of the fire like you did the, four, the three Hebrew children, God, as they were cast into that furnace, Lord, and it was turned up seven times hotter because they would not bow to Baal or any other gods, but, Lord, they worshipped only you. And they said, whether you deliver me or not, we're not going to bow. Hallelujah. Lord, I believe that you're putting that spirit within your people. They are determined whether you deliver us or not, God, we are not going to bow to this old harlot church, to this old babbling waves, God, that we're going to stand. And Lord, we're not going to give ourselves unto false idols, Lord, but we're going to give ourselves unto the true and holy God. Oh, hallelujah, the great I am. And Lord, Jesus is his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, anoint my vessel this day to preach this word. And God, I believe, God, that you are putting your anointing upon a people today, upon your ministers, God, that's going to go forth in this hour to declare your name, Jesus, to the world. And God, many are going to hear and receive and be delivered in this time and set free. Lord, I see healing coming to forth, Lord, in your body, Lord, like never before. Lord, healing, God, being spread about through the Holy Ghost by your fire, Lord. You're going to saturate us in you. Oh, hallelujah, Father. Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're adding wisdom unto us, God, as we seek your face. Lord, as we consecrate ourselves unto you, God, and apply ourselves unto your word and your word unto us. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, I see you doing great things, Lord, in this hour. Lord, that such a hunger and a thirst, God, is being burst forth in us because, God, we're tired, Lord, we're tired, Father of the old way of just halfway in and halfway out, God. Lord, we don't want that any longer, God. We want you, Lord, in your fullness and statue of your measure, God. Lord, we want to enter on in to the place, God, that you have prepared for us. Lord, great and mighty, Lord, is your spirit, Lord. And God, you want to do great things within your church, God. And Lord, you're preparing our heart and helping us, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. God, you're preparing your church, Lord. We're going to be without spot and blemish 
blemish or even a wrinkle. Lord, there's going to be no unclean thing in us, God, because we're going to be full of your of your spirit, Lord. We're going to be full, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. That's what I want, God. I want the fullness of you. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, as your church without walls, God, as they get under the fivefold ministry, Lord, they'll come forth. They'll be fully armored up in you, Jesus, that they can stand and withstand the wiles of the devil, God. Lord, we've got to do according to thy word for our strength to come forth. And Lord, I want to do according to thy word. Lord, I don't want man-made doctrines. Hallelujah. I don't want traditions of men, but Lord, I want you and you only, Father. I don't want any doctrines of devils, Lord, but God, I want the true true word of God that it sanctifies me, Lord, and it purifies me and cleanses me, God. Lord Jesus, sanctify your people, Lord. Keep us in this hour. Lord, we are kept by you. We do not keep ourselves. Lord, if any man thinks he's staying, Lord, take heed, least he fall. Lord, we need you, Father. Lord, anoint my vessel this day, Lord, to breach preach this word, God, unto your people. And Lord Jesus, cause every yoke to fall, Lord. Break every yoke, Jesus, as this word falls upon the ears, Lord, that will open up and receive, God. And upon the eyes, God, that their eyes and the veils will fall away. And Lord, they'll be able to see thy word, God. And no more, God, grope at the wall. No more, Jesus, stumble in noonday because they will see you, Lord, God, plainly and be able to see, God, because you your word lights our path, Lord. It's a lamp under our feet, God, and it directs us and orders our steps, Lord, in you. Oh, I love you, Father. I praise you. I magnify you. Lord, in the precious holy name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 61. And I just want to speak to you just a few minutes with what, well, I'm not going to say a few minutes because it'll be longer than that. I know I'm accused of being a long-winded preacher, but I can't help it. I'm full of the word. God has put it there. It ain't no pat on my back. It's just what God has done in my life. And I tell you what, I search him out. I seek him because I want to know more and more of him. I'm not satisfied. Hallelujah. But I do want him to be satisfied with me. My goodness, I want to be sanctified and set apart from this old world. This world has nothing for me that I want. Hallelujah. I want nothing but Jesus. And whatever he wants to bless my life with, he'll bring it to me. Hallelujah. Why? Because first I'm going to seek after his righteousness and his kingdom. Hallelujah. All of his righteousness and whatever I have need of, he'll bring it to me. And children, God, that's what we've got to do. We can't put the cart before the horse. My goodness, we've got to do this thing according to his word. If we'll do that, then God will move by his holy anointing. If we'll just get in line with his word, then we'll start seeing him. My goodness, spring forth in us. We'll start seeing healing spring forth in the church once again. I'm telling you, children of God, God is wanting to do these things for us. It's been us that's caused the hindrance to come. But I'm telling you, I'm ready to enter in. God, I want what you have for me, Lord. No longer, God, do I want to, to just uh, walk around in a phase, Lord, or in a, in a daze, God. But Lord Jesus, I want to see clearly, Lord, and I want to be opened up to all that you have given unto me. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. I read about him preparing a place and preparing things for us uh, that our eyes have not even beheld. Oh, my goodness, I tell you, I want everything that God has. But I want to start reading. And I want you to let this word take a hold of your heart and your spirit. And if you'll do that, I'm telling you, God can start a transformation taking place in us. You know, it's got to come forth in the spirit. You can't try to do this thing in the flesh. It's got to come forth in the spirit. And I tell you what, if we'll let God have his way in our lives, he'll develop in us exactly what we need. My goodness, we're working on a building, children of God. We're growing. God is helping us. He's, he's strengthening us. And he's helping us to see where we're falling short. You know, the Bible tells us we fall short of the glory of God. And yes, we do. But I tell you, when the Spirit of God is in you, you do not sin. When it remains in us, it causes sin to go. Hallelujah. And when that Spirit of God and his seed remains in us, his Holy Ghost is given unto us, and it teaches us right from wrong. It tells us what to do and what not to do. But it's up to us to listen to it. Hallelujah. But he said, when the Comforter comes, when the Spirit 
word of truth. Hallelujah. It's been given unto us. It'll lead and guide us into all truth. And that's what I want. I want truth. I'm a lover of the truth. I'm telling you, I don't want any of this old garbage that's going around that the wolves and sheep clothing are spilling out and them that are hirelings. I don't want none of that mess. I don't eat from those tables at all. I'm telling you, I only eat from the table of God what he has got spread for me. That's what I eat upon. That's what I feast upon. Uh, hallelujah. He said, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. That's what I seek after. Hallelujah. And if we'll do that, I'm telling you, children of God, he will transform our very lives. And we'll see a true conversion come in the hearts. You know, he told Peter, he said, when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Many have not been truly converted. Hallelujah. They've got a touch from God. But there's got to be a co true conversion. Take a place in that heart. Hallelujah. That his newness of life uh, can spring forth in us. Uh, hallelujah. That we'll love like he loves. Uh, hallelujah. That we'll walk as he walks and we'll talk as he talks. You got the church out there that are deceived. Walking in their own way and doing their own thing and thinking that they're pleasing God, but you're not. You're walking contrary to his word. If you do that, you cannot please him. You cannot please him. Only if you lay down your life and pick up your cross and follow after him, then you are pleasing him. I heard a song once, and I like that song. I'm going to have to learn it. Who will pay the price that Jesus said to pay? Hallelujah. There's only a few that's going to do it, but God's got a people that's going to do it, children of God. They're going to be willing to lay everything and cast it aside that they might come forth in him. That he can glory his, his self within our temples. You know, you hear the songs all the time about Jesus building me a mansion. Well, he is. It's you, children of God. You're that mansion of God. Hallelujah. He's creating in you. Making you a glorified. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, temple. Because you are his. You're not created by man's hands, but you're created by the hand of God. And if you'll walk on in, you'll see God spring forth in your life, my goodness, in a measure that you cannot even comprehend in the carnal mind. But he'll take you into the third heaven. He'll take you in places, hallelujah, that you never dreamt of. But I'm telling you, God has got a people that's going to be set aflame in this hour. Hallelujah. He's going to saturate them in a way, hallelujah, that nothing else matters. They're going to enter that prayer closet. They're going to enter that realm with God because they're going to hunger and thirst after him in such a measure, hallelujah, that we're going to come forth as pure gold. Woo, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I feel this word today. I got to get into this word. Hallelujah. I'm going to start reading at verse 1. This is Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. Please get your Bibles and follow along. I want you to see what the word of God says, and I hope you got a King James Version. Because I tell you what, all these other man-made versions, all they do is take away from the Word of God and add to. I don't want no part of it. But I tell you what, if you'll get you a King, some people say, well, I can't understand the King James Version. Well, it's, it's written that like that on purpose. <laughs> God's Word is a mystery. He's wanting you to seek after Him that a revelation, that a spirit of revelation will be given unto you that you'll be able to understand it. And once that spirit of revelation comes, I tell you what, it'll open up and it'll flow into your heart. My goodness, you'll see it and it'll just expand. It's life. Hallelujah. And it'll become life in you. My goodness, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. The Lord is good. We'll come to a place that will be like Paul. It's no longer I that live it, but it's Christ in me. Hallelujah. 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 That's what I'm pressing for. Oh, I want to please him. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now, Jesus. This is about Jesus. And it's concerning us too. Hallelujah. Because we're his anointed ones. And it says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prisons to them that are bound. You know, many go around beating upon God's people in a way that it just uh, 
presses them down. It don't bring any type of deliverance. But I'm telling you that God has got a people that will go forth. No, we don't compromise on the word. No, we don't back out down. Uh, hallelujah. But I tell you what, we'll deliver it in love, uh, even though it might come forth hard. Uh, and I tell you what, instead of it beating you down, uh, it'll cause you to rise up. Uh, because it'll break every yoke that's upon you. Hallelujah. It'll mend your broken heart. Uh, it'll bring forth in you uh, the likeness of Jesus Christ. Uh, hallelujah. I tell you what, God is binding up the broken hearted. Uh, he's proclaiming liberty to the captives. Uh, and he's opening up the prison doors uh, that are bound. Uh, he is setting them free. Uh, hallelujah. I heard from a young man. Uh, hallelujah. That was delivered in prison. It blessed my heart. And now he is eager to run for God. Uh, and he is sitting under men that are giving him good direction. Uh, hallelujah. Them, the soldiers of the cross. Uh, that's been in this a long time. Uh, that has stood the test of time. Uh, and he's hearing them. And I told him. Uh, I said be willing to hear and take instruction. Uh, and they'll help you. Uh, that you can avoid many pit holes. Hallelujah. That you won't fall into them. Uh, I tell you what. That's what's wrong. Uh, you got many young ministers running around. Uh, they don't want any kind of leadership or instruction. But if you'll be willing to sit under them. Uh, hallelujah. That is seasoned in God's word. Uh, that's been seasoned and walked through many trials. Uh, and God has helped them through. Uh, and delivered their feet from many things. Uh, they can give you sound instruction. Uh, they can plant your feet. Uh, hallelujah. In a place that is firmly there. And you'll be firmly planted. Hallelujah. Church God is wanting to sustain this church. We got to get built up. We got to get rooted and grounded in his word. We got to get fully established in him. That's the reason you need to get under good teaching. Hallelujah. That they'll break down this word line upon line, precept on precept. I tell you, there's a plummet line to God's word. I tell you what, there's a line of demarcation. Hallelujah, that you can plainly see as he removes those veils from your eyes. Hallelujah. No longer are you in darkness, but yet light has sprung forth and that you can see plainly that path that is set out before you. Hallelujah. And then you'll step on that path and you'll pray that God will give you the strength and he will, children of God, to walk that straight and narrow way. He'll plant your feet up on the highway of holiness. Hallelujah. Ain't no fool gonna err therein. Only them that are righteous in God is gonna be able to walk that path. But I'm telling you, God is going forth in this hour and he's setting many free. He's breaking all the yokes. Hallelujah. We are seeing demons being cast out by the hand of God. We are seeing many yokes being broke. Hallelujah. By the hand of God. I tell you what, when I went into Africa in 2013, we saw the hand of God move. I tell you what, I don't go forth trying to build a ministry. I don't go forth preaching my name. But I tell you what, I go forth preaching Jesus. I preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. I lift up the banner of Christ. And that's why we see these things done. Because God will confirm his word with signs and wonders falling. Hallelujah. Falling after them. Not after the person, but after the word. Hallelujah. And that's what God is bringing forth in this sour vessels anointed ones uh, that will go forth in his name Jesus uh, and proclaim it at all cost. They're even willing to walk into death to lay down their life naturally. Hallelujah. Even to their head rose. God has got a faithful. They're not going to back up. They're going to stand firm in the Holy Ghost. They're going to seek him and him alone. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, they're going to be faithful too in spirit. They're going to be faithful in his word. They're going to be faithful to him no matter what. And you better believe when you start doing that, the devil's going to try to come after you and destroy you every way he can. He'll even use people in the church to try to destroy you. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, if you'll stand firm in Jesus Christ, hold your peace. Hallelujah. I tell you what, God will fight for you. He'll shout it from the rooftops. Hallelujah. That you are walking in him. I tell you what, God fight for his people. He is your reward. Hallelujah. That means he has your back. You keep your eyes straight ahead upon him. If you keep your eyes singled upon Jesus and not look to the left or to the right, he's got your back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And if you keep firmly planting one step in front of the other, walking a straight and narrow path, uh, you'll see God start moving everything out of your way. I'm not saying you won't have a test in time. Yes, you will. He's going to prove you and see if you're going to stand in him. He knows already, but he's got to prove it unto us uh, that we got to see uh, that through his grace and through his might uh, that he gives us the power to stand strong in him. Uh, I'm telling you, God is developing in us uh, that is dedicating our lives and walking unto him. He is bringing forth the fullness of the measure of the statue of the Son of God uh, within his church. Uh, he's preparing his church in this hour. He's putting a spirit in us. Uh, hallelujah. That we got to dig in. Uh, Lord Jesus, I said, God, help me to dig in like I ain't never dug in. Help me to get in you, Lord, more than I've ever been in you. I want all that he has. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. I'm telling you, God's going to have a people that's going to mourn before him. They're going to repair the altars. They're going to get back to him. Hallelujah. That's the first thing that a Christian should do that has grown cold in God is repair that altar. If you'll repair that altar, hallelujah, I tell you what, then you'll start seeing the fire of God rain down upon you. That's the way the fire of God's going to be poured out. Hallelujah. It's because uh, we're going to walk in him in a measure that we're going to see God go forth in a mighty way. Hallelujah. I tell you, I want to see God move in a powerful way. I've seen him move in a powerful way, but I'm fixing to see God move in a way I ain't never seen. Hallelujah. Through my very vessel. Why? Because I've appointed myself and I have a confirmed in my heart and made up my mind and purposed in myself. Hallelujah. That I'm going to do exactly what God wants me to do no matter how much it hurts the flesh. Hallelujah. You know, when you call and set an appointment somewhere, you made that appointment. You need to make that appointment with God. That's what I mean by appointed. Hallelujah. I tell you what, make that appointment with God to get along with him, to seek his face. And I'm telling you, if you'll do that, if you'll purpose in your heart you're going through, if you'll purpose that you're going to get what he has prepared for you, then he'll give it to you. Hallelujah. Seek him. Turn away from all iniquity. Repent of any of your shortcomings. Uh, repent unto God all of your sins and turn away from your iniquities. And I'm telling you, you'll start seeing God move in a mighty way. I always seek. I examine myself daily before the Lord. To see whether I stand in the faith or not. Because I do know. I'm not ignorant of the devices of Satan. I know that if we allow things to take place in our lives. That takes us away from prayer and studying. And, and, and seeking God and fasting. And I know the devil can sneak in. But if we'll stay prayed up, children of God, and stay sober-minded, I tell you what, God will reveal unto us what we need to do and what we don't need to do. Hallelujah. He'll order our steps if we'll just let him. But listen to what, and that's what God's doing, sending forth his ministers in this hour. They're declaiming and proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. They are crying aloud and sparing not of the vengeance of our God to comfort all that morn. Hallelujah. There's a vengeance fixing to take place. There is a sword upon the land. God's wrath has been poured out in many places and it's going to continue to do so because of the weaknesses up on the land. I tell you what he's hearing those little babies crying that's been murdered left and right everywhere you look up on this earth uh, and this genocide that's going on in abortions today. God is hearing the cry of them children. Hallelujah. They're crying saying Lord avenge us of our blood and I tell you what God is hearing them and he's going to pour out judgments on this earth like they ain't never seen. But I tell you what God is bringing forth the church hallelujah they're going to come forth out of the ashes and they're going to glorify God in this hour like never before you know there's been a shame brought to the church because of weak and cold Christians not getting in and, and playing around with God in today and out tomorrow and making up their own mind to walk in their own way and their own wheels and, and it's cost them dearly because they have suffered in the spirit but I'm telling you God is waking up a people in this hour the wise virgins are awakening Hallelujah. And they, you know, all ten virgins slept. They all had their lamps. 
So uh, God is wakening them this hour. The wise virgins, they're rising, they're going, they're getting their oil, they're getting prepared. The midnight hours are upon us, children of God. I pray that every wise person that hears this word will awaken and start praying and seeking God in a greater measure. Hallelujah. Start, hallelujah. You say, well, I can't do much. You just start. You start applying yourself every day in prayer. Don't let that end the devil take that prayer time. You get it. And if he do have to push it back just a little bit because of jobs and, and natural uh, responsibilities, Responsibilities. You make sure that day don't end without getting in your prayer closet. You don't let things hinder you. You get in there and cry out to God uh, and just pour out your heart to Him. And I'm telling you, He'll hear you. You talk to Him honestly and straightforward. Uh, and I'm telling you, you can't hide nothing from God. Every thought that's ever come to your mind and you allowed to take there, He already knows it. Uh, you repent of it and say, God, uh, help me, Lord Jesus. Put that helmet of salvation on me, uh, Lord, that I don't allow them thoughts to come into my mind. Lord, that I don't give place to them, Lord. And Lord Jesus, help me to keep my spirit, Lord, that you can make me a defense city. And he'll do that that uh, thing in you, children of God. And he's going to comfort all of us that are mourning and weeping at the altar. And he's going to seal us with the writer's ink horn. God is sealing the people in this hour. All them that are mourning, weeping, and crying for the wickedness that is upon the earth. Hallelujah, the uh, writer's ink horn is going forth and it's sealing us in God for this great day that is coming upon us swiftly. Get in, awaken those eyes, awaken, awaken, awaken. Let God stir us once again and set us aflame in him. I tell you what, the Lord spoke to me a few years ago about saturating his church in his holy fire. Hallelujah. And that's what's going to take place, children of God. When I when he was talking to me about it, I could just see it right before me in the spirit. And I could just see liquid gold. Hallelujah. Pouring up on our bodies. Hallelujah. My God, I'm telling you, the spirit of God is going to pour out and saturate us in a minute measure that's going to go forth uh, in the power and the demonstration of Jesus Christ. But listen, it's said to appoint unto them that morning Zion. Woo, hallelujah. He's going to point unto his children. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that morning Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. Uh, I'm telling you, this church uh, is going to come out beautiful in the Lord. Uh, they're going to come up out of the ashes, hallelujah, because the, the fire of God is going to burn everything uh, that's dross in our lives. Uh, it's going to shed it from us, uh, hallelujah, and, and everything that's like him is going to be strengthened, uh, and built upon, uh, hallelujah, in our lives. And we're going to come forth in the beauty of God and shine forth in his righteousness. And listen to what it says right here. The oil of joy for morning. Woo I tell you, I can testify to that. The hotter these fires are getting, the more joy I feel. It's just like an oil. <laughs> you, you think about that scripture in Psalms 23 where he said he anoints our head with oil and our cup runneth over. That's exactly what he does right through the fire. That oil will be poured out upon you. I'm telling you, he'll anoint you for what you face. He'll anoint you to go forth in him. And I'm telling you, he said he'd give us a garment of praise. I'm reading on here. It said the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, hallelujah. That's what I feel taking place upon me, children of God. I feel the garment of praise. Uh, I praise him even in the midst of the flames. Uh, I'm not praying for God to take me out. Uh, I'm praying for God to make me in it uh, and take me on through. Uh, hallelujah. Lord, don't leave me here any longer than what I should be. Uh, but Lord, take me on through, Father, that when I get to the other side, uh, Lord Jesus, that you can shine forth in this vessel. Lord J Jesus, in this mortal body here, Lord, that'll glorify you. Uh, God, that you can be uh, 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 shown forth uh, in my life. And Lord, in the temples uh, of your people, Lord, uh, that they'll go forth, Father, and be clothed, Lord, in your praise and clothed in your garment of righteousness. Oh, we're casting us out, our old filthy righteousness. I'm telling you, that old garment we're not trying to put on. Just like blind Bartimaeus, we're casting it aside because Jesus says, come here. Woo, hallelujah. He said, come here. Hallelujah. Are you tired of being blind? Are you tired of not seeing? Hallelujah. 
If you're tired of being blind in the spirit and not seeing plainly, hallelujah, Jesus is passing by. He is coming by you, hallelujah. Cry out in your spirit, oh, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Open my blind eyes that I can see. Remove this veil from me, hallelujah. But the first thing you do is cast away those filthy garments, your own self-righteousness, hallelujah. And you go and Jesus will touch your eyes and you'll be able to see plainly and he'll clothe you with that raiment of his righteousness and you'll go forth and glorify him in your very life he'll put that garment of praise on you for the spirit of heaviness oh I tell you what my, uh, it's this year it's, and, and, and I know it's been like that in times past but this year it just seemed like there was a heaviness in my heart and a weeping and a crying for the church and for the people because of rebellion Oh, that it would take place in the morning. Oh, but Lord has given me a garment of praise <laughs> for that spirit of, of a burden to pray for his people. Hallelujah, to pray for myself. We got to pray for ourselves too, children of God. I'm telling you, I, I, I tell you, we got to enter in. It says that we might, that they might be called trees of righteousness. We are God's trees. We are his forest. Oh, my goodness, we are a righteous tree if we're letting him prune our branches, if we're letting him make us. Hallelujah. I tell you what, then the fruits of God is coming forth in our lives. We're bearing forth much fruit that he might be glorified in us. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we're trying, we're, we're casting away everything that's unlike him because why? That hunger and thirst is developing in us in a degree that we ain't never failed. We are feeling a fire burning us like we ain't never failed. Hallelujah. And it said that the planting of the Lord, that he might be what? Glorified. This is exactly what God is going to do. He's going to glorify himself within his church. That's what he did in the book of Acts. That's the reason they were first called Christian at Antioch. Because they were Christ-like. And I tell you what, tribulation. Hallelujah, that we have started walking in. And this tribulation is only going to get deeper and greater. Don't fear Apply yourself unto God. You're going to have strength. He'll take you from strength to strength, glory to glory, faith to faith. Just press into Him. Get real with God. It's time to get real. It's time to quit rebelling old Him and letting Satan harden your heart. You know, sin is what hardens your heart. So if your heart has gotten become hardened, it is because of the sin that you have allowed to come into your spirit, into your life. You know, He tells us to cleanse ourselves from all Filthiness of the spirit and of the flesh. <laughs> Only way you can do that is by being a doer of the word and, and pressing into him, praying and seeking him and fasting. You'll see God start trimming away everything that's unlike him. And he'll take you in the deep places of God. And that's what he's wanting to do for his children. Hallelujah. And it, says, go on, it goes on, it says, and they build the old waste. Everything that has felt like a waste in your life will be built and formed up in God. My goodness, you he's a repairer of the breach. You'll see, my goodness, the faith that come forth in you that you have never felt. And it said, they shall rise up Raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Isn't that what we are experiencing today? Because the church has fell away. There's been a great falling away take place in the true church. Hallelujah. They've run after Baal. They've run after Babylon. They've run away, uh, uh, away from God, and they have fallen away from God, and they have tasted and eaten from corruptible tables. They went a whoring on God. Uh, they've run and, and, and ate from corruptible tables and run back to God and try to eat from his table. God put up with it for a while, but now he says, I've had it. I'm not going to take it anymore. That's just like any man. If he had a wife that was cheating on him, he might give her a space of time to repent and get right hallelujah through the help and hand of God that he'll forgive but I'm telling you there comes a time that if she don't come back and straighten up hallelujah I tell you what then he will cast her out and put it in the hands of God and say God you deal with it just be merciful and bring her back <laughs> hallelujah. and the Lord will do that yes he will if if it's in the will of God, he'll do that. Hallelujah. 
But you know, I tell you what, God is so good to us. He helps us. And we no longer will be running every under, every under, under every green tree and eating meats that we are not to partake of because we're eagles, children of God. We're not chickens in a barnyard. We got to have fresh meat. We don't eat these damn little doctrines and traditions of men and doctrines of devils. Hallelujah. He's put a love in us for his truth. I won't accept nothing but truth and truth alone. I don't mess with that mess. When I was uh, renewed in God in 2004 and he uh, brought me back and forgave me and, and filled me and, and set me on fire, I, I'm telling you, been going ever since, seeking the Lord and applying myself unto him. And he's been helping me and maturing me as I go along. Why? Because I'm seeking after him. I'm seeking after his will, not my will. And God is helping me. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that there ain't been struggles throughout it. Yes, there has been. But God, because I want to learn and because I want to know more and more of him, he's took time, he's taught me, he's helped me, he's, he's caused me to be strong in errors that I was weak because I want to listen to him. I want to do what he wants me to do. Hallelujah. And what he told, tells me to do, I try to work on it and be faithful in it daily. Hallelujah. I tell you, God will help us if we'll do that. If we'll do that. And we'll start seeing these desolate places be rebuilt. <laughs> I tell you, there's been a famine for the word, the true word. You know, uh, the labors have been free, few in the true fill of God. You know, I heard a preacher say one time, the labors aren't few. Is he calling God's word a lie? They are few. He said, you see all kind of people running with the gospel. <laughs> yeah, you do, but many of them are wolves in sheep clothing. Many of them are highlands. Many of them are not in God. That ain't the labors he's talking about. He's talking about his true labors, his true anointed ones. Hallelujah, they are few. Oh, but I'm telling you what, there is a people rising, a church that is arising, an army that's coming forth, that God is anointing to go forth in his name, to proclaim his name, Jesus, from the rooftops. The more the devil tries to stamp it out, the more we'll proclaim it. The more the devil will try to come against us and cause us to preach a smooth word, the more we'll preach him. Hallelujah. The more we'll declare his name. The more that we will not com uh, compromise or conform to this world. The more that we'll preach his word straight and give instruction in God to the people how to live holy. You know, you got this old teaching going around. <laughs> That God don't have no shall nots. <laughs> oh my goodness, I tell you. People don't read the word. They, they let the devil blind their eyes. There's all kind of shall nots in the word. <laughs> my goodness, I tell you, we need to hear God. We need to lay aside everything that offends him. My, if you truly love him, everything that offends God offend you. Everything God hates, you'll hate. I ain't talking about hating souls. But you'll hate the sin that has a hold of them. You'll hate the things that the devil is corrupting in their lives, but you'll love that soul. You'll pray for that soul, and you'll love that soul. And it's just like the homosexuals. That, that is a perverted spirit. It's perversion. It's a hateful spirit. It strikes out every, against everything that is good. It strikes out against them that will raise up a standard before them. And it tries to destroy. It hates you. I, I, I'm telling you, that's the reason they... Uh, when Christians try to get out on the corner and raise up a banner for Jesus, when they're out raising a banner for the devil and for perversion, that they try to attack them and, and do things unto them and hurt them. And uh, that's because it's, it's demonic. They're filled with demonic spirits. But they can get delivered if they'll turn away and truly repent. But they're demon-possessed. They got to have deliverance. Now you got them running around creating churches, gay churches. It's sad. Saying they're saved when they're not saved. It's time that they got to hear truth. They got to hear it. Oh, you don't need to preach like that, Sister Renny. You got to show love. I am showing love. I'm trying to pull them out of the fire. I don't want to see their soul go to hell and burn forever. My goodness, I'm preaching truth. Truth is what sets free. Not this old feigned flesh love. It's not doing anything but 
carrying people to hell. People got to know what true love is. True love will correct. A parents that love their children, they'll correct them and instruct them and give them wise and sound judgment and correct them if they won't hear. Parents that don't love their children, they let them run wild. Let them do what they want. And don't teach them the ways of God. I'm telling you, you better straighten up and you better teach that child the ways of the Lord and train them up in the ways of God. And if you'll do that, I'm telling you, you'll see the blessings of God come upon your life. And you start letting him apply a given spirit to you. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. But there's such a rebellion in the church today. They don't want to send God's gospel. They heap it upon the, the lust of their flesh. They're building bigger and better barns. Hallelujah. But what happened in the parable of the rich man that built bigger barns? What happened? That's exactly what's going to take place to them that don't wake up and hear God in time. God's going to have a people that's going to send this gospel. Whether it's you, I don't know. It's up to you if you'll let him work in your heart and give you a cheerful uh, spirit to give unto him freely. You know, the, the ones that right now are standing with this gospel are the little widows that don't have much, but they're given what they have. Hallelujah. And even them are given what they don't have, but God is blessing them. I'm seeing God turn around things in their life. I'm seeing God bless their hands. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I got a testimony today that bless my heart. Hallelujah. I tell you what, if you'll keep pressing on, if you'll do what God wants you to do, and you don't forget him, and you don't rob him in tithes and offerings, you'll see the blessings of God turn up on your life. Not saying you won't be tried for a time to see if you're going to still pay your tithes and offerings when things get rough. But if you'll be faithful to God and pay tithes and offerings before you even meet your own uh, uh, things to your flesh. If you'll stop eating out so much and stuff like that. You know people will go out and eat and buy more and more and more clothes and more and more and more shoes. They'll go out and spend thousands of dollars on these old games and on these old uh, electronic gadgets. But yet, they say they don't have the money for God. I'm telling you, it's a spirit of evil that's taking a hold of the church today. You say, Sister Brenda, I'm tired of hearing that. Well, I'm going to speak it as long as God tells me to speak it until it wakes many up. I'm trying to wake a church up through the Spirit of God and by His help. Trying to get people alert one more time. You cannot rob God and expect God to pour out the Holy Ghost. You look in the uh, book of Acts. My goodness, what took a hold? They were selling everything they had to bring and set it at the uh, apostles' feet. Hallelujah. And what did the apostles do? They didn't heap it upon their sales. They didn't go out and buy mansions and Lamborghinis and all these things. Uh, but they distributed among the people as they had need. Uh, hallelujah. That is the true move of God. Uh, it ain't these old uh, wolves in sheep clothing these old hirelings uh, that are building bigger mansions uh, and driving bigger and better cars, hallelujah, on the very backs of God's people because the people are too blind to see it. It's time to wake up just because they'll promise you this and that. I'm telling you, it's lies. Yes, there are true blessings of God. Yes, God will give you shelter. He'll give you clothing. He'll give you food. In what manner I cannot say, only he. He knows the heart and he blesses according to his will. Not our will. But you've been pr promised mansions and cars and all this mess in your sins and it ain't coming. Oh, the devil might bless you for a little while to make you and deceive you, but I'm telling you, there will come a reckoning a day, hallelujah, when it'll all be stripped from you because I'm telling you, God is going to try to wake up a people. He's even stripping from his people, hallelujah, in this time. You know, the Lord's been telling me to downsize and that's what I've been trying to do, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm not wanting to build bigger barns in this natural I want the bigger barns in God's spirit. Uh, hallelujah. That's where I want the big barns at. Uh, hallelujah. It's in him, through him, and about him. Uh, and if we'll do that, I'm telling you, we'll see God bless our hands. And God has blessed me. See, the blessings of God are up on me. And I know people hate it. They've tried to curse me here and there. Oh, but I tell you what, you cannot curse what God has blessed. 
and you cannot bless what God has cursed. I tell you, it's time that you walk in Him. It's time that we get our hearts right. This is a heart thing, and if it gets in the heart, it'll show on the outside. Them running around saying God has changed their heart, you don't see nothing transformed on the outside and in their spirit. They didn't get a touch from God. Because this is out of the issues of a man's heart. It flows and it speaks. You got people in church that's saying that God has delivered them and, and saved them, and they're still cussing. They've still got the lust of the flesh manifested in their lives. Their eyes go a-wandering. They lust in their heart. They have committed adultery in their heart. It's just as well as if you went and done it, telling you you've got to repent and get back to God. It's time to get back to the old past and the old landmarks them God. I know people say, well, I'm tired of hearing that. Sister Brenna. I'm going to say it as long as God tells me to say it because there will be a, a few that will wake up there will be a few that will take a hold of it and do it. I'm reaching for them. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, if we'll keep pressing in, children of God, I'm telling you, we're fixing to see a move of God like we ain't never seen. We're seeing it in a measure now, but my goodness, God is fixing to take us into a fullness of it. Hallelujah. That no generation has ever seen. Hallelujah. And I'm ready. That's the new thing he's going to do. Hallelujah. The new thing that this old Babylon church tried to preach, that corruption is okay, that sin is okay. Hallelujah. That everything is under grace, and you can live and sin like you want to, and you'll make it old in. That is a lie of the devil. That is not a new thing. That is the old thing out of Nimrod, out of Babylon. Hallelujah. But the new thing that God's going to do in his church, hallelujah, it's going to bring forth the trees of righteousness in God. They're going to come forth in his very likeness. They're going to come forth and love like he loves. They're going to go forth and walk like he walks and talks like he talks. Hallelujah. They're going to shun and cast away all evil. Hallelujah. And choose to do righteousness. Uh, choose to walk in him uh, in a deeper and greater way uh, and we're going to see God uh, bring forth and establish his church uh, in a way that they're unmovable hallelujah I'm telling you get planted by the river of life uh, let that river of life flow through you freely hallelujah through your belly and everywhere it spreads out it'll reach uh, and it'll bring forth deliverance hallelujah there's deliverance in this hour there's healing in this hour healing is the children bread. We got to get back church to God and we'll see these things flourish. God is bringing forth a flourishing in them that are pressing in. Whew, hallelujah. The old waste places are being rebuilt and they're rebuilt in God. Hallelujah. No longer is the city of God laying waste. Whew, hallelujah. That is the church. No longer are they laying waste. Hallelujah. All the desolations are being returning back to the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. The desert places, my goodness, are coming forth as the Garden of Eden because of God and of His Spirit pouring out that living water. It's going forth and it's multiplying. Oh, it's flowing, children of God. Let us get in. Let us get in that flow. Hallelujah. I seen a vision about a year ago and I saw this old mucky, muddy water it was a river, and it twisted and turned, and, and it was crooked, and I saw a multitude of people. All I could see their heads, but I saw all nations, all kinds of races in this river, and they were flowing in this muddy water. Hallelujah. And they were satisfied to flow with it. And they were being deceived. Hallelujah. Oh, and I tell you, some of God's people were caught up in it. Oh, but God is going to bring his people out of that. God is going to bring his people out because they're going to hear the call to come out of her, my people. They're going to hear that call. They're going to recognize it. They're going to recognize his voice. Uh, say, uh-oh, I've been in the barnyard all this time. I've been plucking around with the chickens. Uh, hallelujah. I'm no longer going to stay uh, in the barnyard. Uh, oh, but I hear that righteous cry of the eagle. Hallelujah. And I'm an eaglet of God. Uh, and I'm going to fly high. And I'm going to soar high in him. Hallelujah. No longer will I be satisfied with corruptible meat, but I'll eat the fresh things of God. There's a fresh anointing taking place on his anointed ones that are getting in. Hallelujah. There's a fresh anointing being poured out. Hallelujah. By God in this hour. And I want to get in. I want to be bathed in it. I want to be saturated in it. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you what God 
he's going to do a greater thing. Uh, he's going to do a new thing. You fix a see deliverance uh, in a minute that you ain't never seen. Drug addicts. It's going to be completely delivered. They ain't going to have to struggle. Some of them have been getting touched partially. Still struggling. Some of them have got partial healings in their soul, heart, and mind. Oh, but God is fixing to bring a complete deliverance. No longer is their body going to crave for this thing. No longer are they going to need it. God is going to bring. I know some of them suffer pain in an immeasurable way. Hallelujah. But God is fixing to set them free. Hallelujah. There's no longer pain. It's going to wreck their bodies. No longer are their bodies going to be crippled up. No longer. Hallelujah. Is their spirit man going to be crippled and hurt? Hallelujah. God is going to bring complete healing to them. He's going to bring beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God has got a people that's rebuilding the altar. God's got a people. Hallelujah. They're getting in their prayer rooms. They're shutting the door. Hallelujah. As his indignation is passing over, and God is putting us in that ark of safety. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the devastations that's fixing to wreck havoc upon this earth. I'm telling you, you better be hidden, God. You ain't seen nothing yet. Many playing around in church, their feet are going to be taken with the wicked. I can't say what happens to their soul. Hallelujah. Oh, but I'm telling you, God is going to take their feet with the wicked because they will not get down to business with God. Many are going to be bearing their loved ones. Hallelujah, because they would not get in and hear from God. I'm telling you, we better get in. We better stop rebelling on God. I'm telling you, you better get rid of your old self, your old way, your old will. I'm telling you, God don't want you to have your own little personality. He wants you to come forth in Him in His likeness. That's the personality He wants you to have. You better quit hearing these deceivers that is deceiving your spirit. Hallelujah. It's a spirit of delusion that's been poured out. And if you rebel of God, He'll send it to you. The Bible says He spit, sent out the spirit of delusion to them that rebel and won't receive. You know, I've heard people say, oh, God wouldn't do that. Read your Bibles. Stop listening to these old hirelings. All they want is your money to build for them. They're not building to the kingdom of God. They're building for them. Bigger houses. Finer clothes. Going out and spend thousands on a suit. What a shame. Why the gospel is lingering. Hallelujah. While the true gospel is suffering. Telling you it's sad. You can buy a nice suit for a way lot less than that. Going out and, and buying shoes that cost thousands. Off the backs of people. God is sick of it. Many of his people are caught up in it. Because they promised you these old natural things. And that's what you get your eyes upon. You better get your eyes upon Jesus Christ. And you better be willing to sell out all for him. Sell out all for him. In time, God will bring the, uh, blessings to you in the natural. But seek him first. Seek all his righteousness and his kingdom. And whatever you have need of, he'll bring it to you. Where God sends me in foreign fields, I'm trying to teach him. That God is not sending his true ministers there. To heap money upon them. They're bringing them the true gospel. And he's wanting them to pitch in with what little they have. And if they'll pitch in with what little they'll have, my goodness, they'll start seeing the blessings of God be poured out upon them. No longer will they be living hand to hand all the time. But God will bring blessings unto them. Hallelujah. That they'll be able to provide for their families better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I went in 2013, when I went to Mexico, I tell them I don't bring you silver and gold. I bring you the true gospel. Hallelujah. That'll bring forth deliverance. That'll bring blessings to you and build up your faith in God that you can believe him for yourself. If you just take out handouts all the time, you ain't doing anything. I do know that we're supposed to try to help in the natural. I know that. 
And that's what I'm praying this time, God, I can take more to help in the natural. Hallelujah. Trying to get God's people behind me to help me to go. Hallelujah. I'm, a, I'm going. The Lord has provided for the way to go in the plane ticket, and I'm getting on that plane. And I'll go with what he provides, because whatever he provides, that's what he's wanting to do. Hallelujah. But, boy, it's the same to the church. There's many of you out there that know me and know my ministry and know the ministry that God's put in my life and know that I'm real with God. Hallelujah. But you won't even part with $5 to help me to go. But yet you say you love me. And want me to spend hours and hours and hours in prayer praying for your lost loved ones, praying for your healing. But yet you won't even give $5 to help me to go and send this gospel. Hallelujah. I tell you where the true love of God, it's in action. Hallelujah. I show you the true love of God by playing, laying before him, praying and weeping for your children just as much as I do for mine. And praying for God to bless your hands. I tell you, I have been changing some of my prayers. I said, Lord, them that will send your gospel, Lord, bless them. Bless them abundantly. Bless them, God. Put it in their hands to send this gospel. To them that rob you, Lord, you strip it from them. You said, Sister Brenda, you ought not pray like that. Oh, God moved on me to pray like that, children of God. I'm telling you, I pray according to the will of God. God needs to strip some so he can wake them up. I'm telling you, you better start paying your tithes and offerings. If you don't have a church to go to, you better start paying your tithes. Hallelujah to someone that you know is good ground, that is a ministry that's going forth for God and pray for God to bring you to a church. And then when God blesses you with a church and a pastor, that's where your tithes goes. Hallelujah. But until then, you put it in a ministry that you know is true. And you give your tithes and offerings. You be faithful in it. Even when it gets hard, and I tell you what, you'll see God bring blessings upon you. You'll see God start saving your lost loved ones. You'll start seeing healing flow in your families. Hallelujah. You'll start seeing God's word manifested in a greater and greater way. Now listen to the blessings that God said he's going to bring to us as these old waste places are repaired and built up in him, as that sure foundation is coming forth in our lives of Jesus Christ. We're, we're built upon the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. As the book of Acts was. And listen to what he says. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. In other words, he'll bring help to you. Hallelujah. That they will do for you. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. That means he'll bring help to you. My goodness, they'll help you in every area. My, 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 I tell you what, God is something else. I love him and praise him many times through the ministry. I've had to do so much by myself because it's hard to get people to help you these days. But I'm telling you, God is letting me know there's coming a time that there's going to be help to me. Hallelujah. They'll take over things that I'm having to do that I can give more and more of my time to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that's where I love to be is in the presence of the Lord that's where I relish hallelujah is in his glory hallelujah in my prayer time getting before him and him taking in me into places that I have not went oh he'll do the same for you it depends on how much hunger and thirst you got in your heart and soul. Hallelujah. Awaken today. Let God waken you out of your complacency. Many are satisfied where they're at. Oh, Lord, don't come satisfied. Hallelujah. Yes, you want the Lord to be satisfied with you, but the way he's satisfied with you is because you keep pressing. It's because you keep growing. Hallelujah. It's because you keep seeking after him. He said, seek me while I may be found. Seek me while I'm near. He's near children of God unto you. He's saying, seek me. Turn to me. Hallelujah. I'll show you a better way to go. Hallelujah. I'll enlighten you to my word. I'll plant it in your heart. I'll write it upon the fleshly tablets of your heart. Hallelujah. And bring you forth in my truth. 
trees of righteousness. Uh, he's creating a, a godly forest. Uh, he's creating a forest. Uh, hallelujah. That'll stand in him. Uh, trees that are strong and healthy. Hallelujah. And the spirit uh, that'll stand in the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. That's firmly planted. Uh, hallelujah. Why? Because they're planted by that river of water and their roots are going deep. Uh, they're flourishing with fruit uh, even in the desert. Uh, hallelujah. In the times of trials and deserts uh, that we have walked through, our fruit is still flourishing. Uh, our leaves are still green in the Holy Ghost. Uh, why? Because uh, we're becoming deeper. Hallelujah. And grounded even more uh, and by his river of water. That river of life is springing forth. Uh, he's making us wells, children of God. Uh, that's going to run over and flow out. Be wells for God. Full of his spirit. Full of his fire. Hallelujah. I feel the power of this word. And it goes on. It says, but you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Whew, hallelujah. Why? Because they see that you are true and genuine in God. You love your enemies. You do good to them that despitefully use you. Hallelujah. We do it because God puts it in us. Because we're getting rid of that old flesh nature. Hallelujah. We're crucifying it upon the cross. Hallelujah. Through fasting and prayer and supplication unto God. We're getting rid of it. He's bringing forth his spirit in us. That we can love like he loved. Hallelujah. Oh, I tell you, we'll pray for them that despitefully use us. We'll turn the other cheek. Oh, my goodness. And they'll look and behold and say, that is surely a saint of God. That they'll be able to tell when you've been with them that they know that you have been with God. That, see, that's what it has been likened in the church. It's what's been likened in the church. Not to paint no flowers on me, but I've had people tell me, say, when, you, when I'm around you, I can tell that you are a woman of God. I can tell that you are a woman that seek his face. I can tell that you are real with God. Hallelujah. It ain't a show that we put on. It's realness that flows out of us. Hallelujah. I tell you what, it humbles us. It humbles me when I hear people say things like that to me. I said, oh, it's Jesus and him alone. Hallelujah. It ain't nothing but Jesus. I said, if it was me, hallelujah, I'd be the opposite. Our old flesh man is opposite of the God. But I tell you what, if we'll crucify this flesh, many are not willing to get on the cross. We've got to get on the cross. Hallelujah. Be willing to pay the price that Jesus said to pay. God has got a people that's are willing. They're doing it now. Hallelujah. That's the reason we're seeing a greater growth in the Spirit. That's the reason we're seeing a greater fire being poured out. Oh, it's, we ain't even touched the surface of it yet, children of God. That's a new thing He's going to do. Oh, my goodness. And His deliverance is going to spring forth and deliver them up out of their sin, up out of their corruption. No longer will they walk in it and be happy. Hallelujah. But they'll have real, true, genuine deliverance. They won't still hang on the stripping pole and say they're saved. They won't still be a homosexual and say they're saved. Hallelujah. Because he'll have them to see their self as they are. Hallelujah. And they see, my goodness, how fall, how short they fall of him and repent and get right with him. And him cover their, their soul in his blood and forgive them. Cast their sins in the sea of forgiveness to be remembered no more. Hallelujah. Set them free. Oh, I'm telling you. Deliverance is sure. Deliverance is sure. My goodness, I'm telling you, I'm going on in at all costs. And I'm telling you, and you better believe the trials have been hard. The fire has been hot. Oh, but I'm telling you, now I'm coming up out of the ashes, children of God. My, 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 you fixing to see a, a going forth like it ain't never been seen. Not me. Not me, but the power of God through this ministry that is placed in my life. It's his ministry. But I'm telling you, I want to be obedient unto him. And him use me to his glory in all things. Hallelujah. But listen to what it says. <laughs> Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. Hallelujah. Not being prideful, but my goodness, God is going to bless us. You know, he said the wicked's riches are laid up for the righteous. Yes, they are. They're, right. They're laid up for the righteous. 
But it said, for your shame, you shall have double. There's been a shame, children of God. The church has brought a shame for it because they will not live right and say they're his, but yet not do the things that he says. But God is going to wipe away all that shame. God is bringing forth a true righteousness within his church. Why? Because they're getting on the cross. <laughs> they're letting him take everything out of their life that's unlike him and live in his word. It said, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land shall they possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. I tell you, God's bringing a double portion unto us, children of God. I'm telling you. Yes, he is. We're fixing to see a double portion poured out like we, we think we saw double portions in the past. Uh-uh. We are fixing to see a double portion in the measure that we have not seen. You see, there you go, saying about the future. Oh, we're seeing it in a measure now. God's already started. God's already started. It's here and there. You know, years ago, the Lord showed me in 2005, I saw a little flame here, a little flame there, a little flame over here, and a little flame over there. Hallelujah. I didn't understand what I was seeing at first. Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, I saw a great wind come through and fan the blaze, and it went into one big, huge fire. Hallelujah. I, the Lord was showing me exactly what's fixing to take place. Uh, there's a little fire over here, a little fire over there as they're pressing in, as they're getting with God. Hallelujah. As they're repairing and the altar we're seeing it here and there but I'm telling you what we're fixing to come together in the unity of the spirit of God hallelujah why because that fivefold ministry is working people are getting under they're receiving all them that are rebelled and know they won't they won't get in and get get with uh, the fivefold ministry but they're going on in their own way they're going to stand on the outside and look in they cannot partake of this thing only them that are paying the price uh, hallelujah is going to partake of this thing only them that won't all of God on them that are hungry and thirsting after his righteousness. They're going to taste this thing and they're going to be filled with a double portion of everlasting joy. Hallelujah shall be given unto them. I tell you what, he's going to give us beauty for ashes, church. Hallelujah, we're springing forth in the ways of God. For I, the Lord, love judgment. See, God loves righteous judgment. This mess that's been going on, he hates it. He said, I hate robbery for burnt offering. See, God's been hating this mess. You robbing him, building your barns bigger while his gospel lays languishing and suffering. Tell you, God called the church forth to send forth his gospel. Oh, he'll send it forth if he has to by a sinner. Oh, but it's a shame to the church. For this gospel has to go forth by a sinner's hand when he's called the church to send it forth. You rise up in your rebellion and say, oh, I won't even give you a penny to go. Well, go ahead. See what it gets you. You won't have a penny to rub together with another penny. And I'm not trying to speak a curse on you. I'm just speaking what God tells me. This is God telling you what's going to come to you. Because God's sick and tired of this mess. He's sick and tired of the church living like they want to and say that they're of him and not producing fruit of righteousness in your life. Going out and partying. I ain't talking about partying like the world parties, but you're partying in the flesh. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with your families coming together as long as you do it in the spirit of God and as long as you get together, you can cook and eat and pray and, and rejoice and sing hallelujah unto him. Ain't a thing wrong with it. Ain't a thing wrong with the church coming together and doing those things. But my goodness, I'm telling you, there's a time that we got to get before and cry, weep and howl and sackcloth and ashes between the porch and the altar. Priest of God, that's what's been languishing. Hallelujah. It's within the churches in a spirit of folly. Hallelujah. It's because uh, the preachers have not been praying uh, and seeking God. God and laying between the porch and altar and fasting and praying and lying in sackcloth all night. Hallelujah. They've been playing. Letting other things take up their time. Hallelujah. I tell you what, we better start cherishing the things of God. Hallelujah. God will bless you. He'll bring things to you that you need. If you'll put him first. Hunger and thirst after him. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. 
the few that are being faithful and sending his gospel, you watch and see if God ain't going to start turning things around for you. You watch and see if you won't start seeing your loved ones come in and be delivered and set free and being set on fire for God. Watch and see if they won't be uh, start being healed and delivered. Hallelujah. And spring forth in God. You watch and see if he won't start blessing your hand that you can better provide for your family. Why? Because you have not forgotten him. Why? Because you have not went out. Hallelujah. And played the harlot. Hallelujah. But you've been faithful unto God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God, you're fixing to see God spring forth in your life like you ain't never seen. Because you proved faithful. Because you proved faithful even through the hard times. Hallelujah. You that are building bigger barns and better barns in the flesh, you go ahead. You do it. You walk in rebellion. You see where to get you. You, you read that parable of the rich man. Hallelujah. See what happened. Get in your Bible and see what takes place. Hallelujah. He's going to bring them barns down, I'm telling you. It's going to be required of you. It's going to be required of you, children of God. Hallelujah. You say, Sister Brynja, you are not speak things. I'm only speaking the word of God. I'm only speaking the word of God. Get in your Bibles and read it. Consume it and let it come a part of you. It'll change you. It's in the grafted word, the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. When engraftation takes part in you, in a tree, or, or in you, it becomes a part of you. The engrafted word is what becomes a part of us. And we come a part of it. Children of God, there's got to be a waking up. The wise virgins are going to hear this cry. This vessel of God is not going to back down by His grace. Because I ask God to sustain me. I ask God to put it in me. Because I know my flesh cannot do it. I know in my flesh I could not stand. Hallelujah. I don't think I stand least I fall. I'm telling you, I know I'm kept by God. I thank Him all the time that He enlarges the steps beneath my feet and keeps me. Hallelujah, I don't keep myself. You don't keep yourself. If you ever think that you would never do anything, you better watch out. God will pull His hand back and show you just who and what keeps you. I hope it don't take that. Because I'm telling you, it's a hard way to go. It's a rough way. It's a hard lesson. But it's a good lesson if you have to walk it. It's a good lesson if you have to watch watch it. Walk it, I mean. It said, For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their work in truth. Whew. See, truth is the only thing that will do. Only truth will make you free. Nothing else will. Man-made doctrines, man-made traditions, all it does is imprison you. It does not help you. I tell you, many are going to the seminaries, cemeteries, trying to build their ministries through that. You know how to build your ministry? Now, you need good leadership. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you need to get on your knees. Go to the desert. Get with God and hear from God. He'll build you up in Him. And He'll build you up through good leadership as well. Hallelujah. They'll teach you how to stand. They'll teach you how to be strong. If you'll listen. But if you won't listen, you'll get out there and you'll go through things that you did not have to go through. Just because you were rebellious. There's a rebellious church today. I'm telling you, I'm seeing it firsthand. But you know, I tell you what. God. You know, ministers of the gospel, they see many things. And they're out among the people, and they see many things. They hear many things. But see, we don't go by the seeing of the eye and the hearing of the ear. Only thing that we see and hear is through God. But God has been showing us through the Spirit the condition of the church. People sitting on a pew thinking they're all right when they're destined for hell because they're wrapped up, tied up in flesh. They're not wrapped up and tied up in God. It's time to get tangled up in Jesus, not tangled up in anything else. But they're allowing their self to become entrapped again in the things of this life and in this world. We've got to keep ourselves free from it, children of God. We've got to press in to the glory of God. It says, for your shame, you have, I've already read that. Let's go down. It's on verse 8. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth. 
and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Isn't that something? A perpetual covenant that will never be broken. That never will be broken. My, 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 my. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. See, once again, the church will shine with the glory of God. And once again, they'll look on the church and say they are of God. Just like they had to do with the Hebrew children, with Daniel. When God delivered Daniel out of the lion's den. You know, the king, he even put forth a decree that all people had to worship the God of Daniel. Or they'd be put to death. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what. God is going to show forth his glory in this hour. It's going to shine forth in a mighty, mighty, mighty way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it goes on. It says, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. You know, I preached a word one time about where they're going to pull on our skirts. Hallelujah. And say, I know God is with you. Help me. I know God is with you. They'll be pulling on our skirts saying, help me, help me, help me in God. I know that God is standing in you and with you. They're going to be pulling on our skirts, children of God. That means pulling on our spirit, wanting what God has given unto us. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, and my soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are getting our garment on. That wedding garment has been made. Hallelujah. I tell you what, when God brings the fullness of his glory within his church, uh, we're going to stand there in that garment of righteousness. That gown is going to be on us. Uh, hallelujah. It's going to shine in the glory of the Lord. There won't be no spot, no blemish, not even a a wrinkle in us. Uh, hallelujah. We'll be a church that's made ready. We'll be a bride that'll be standing there looking for her bridegroom. Hallelujah. When the Lord showed me that vision, I saw a bride. Hallelujah. She was clothed in one of the most beautiful gowns I've ever seen. And I mean, it was so crystal white that it shone. Uh, hallelujah. With a glory that I have never beheld. Uh, hallelujah. I tell you what, the glory of God was shining upon her and she was standing there and she was looking she was looking for her bridegroom. She had made herself ready. And I tell you what, this bride dress that I seen, it had a, a, a veil upon it, went around, and jewels were around the top of the crown. Hallelujah. And there was a drape that come down. Hallelujah. And, and it hung down over her. And, and, and I tell you what, and this robe, this dress that I seen, it was likened unto a Jewish uh, wedding garment. Hallelujah. And I, I, oh, I tell you what, what glory that shined upon her. And right behind her, I seen a soldier that was fully clad in armor. There wasn't a part of him showing. Hallelujah. Not even his hands. Uh, no flesh was showing on him anywhere. His, he was fully armored up. Uh, hallelujah. With the shield of God in faith. Hallelujah. He was standing there with a sword drawn. Uh, hallelujah. And the glory of God was shining upon him. Why? Because they were ready. The church was fully armored in God uh, and made ready to receive him. Uh, and standing there looking and ready to be received unto himself. Uh, God is preparing that place. Uh, hallelujah. He's preparing the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, the midnight hour has come. Uh, hallelujah. And the church is preparing herself and getting themselves ready. That is the real true church. Uh, that is the church that's coming in unity of the faith. That is the church that's coming forth in God. Hallelujah. They're making their self ready. And if we'll keep going on and keep pressing in, hallelujah, and return back to God, repent of all our iniquities, hallelujah, and pray and seek his face, hallelujah, and turn away from all iniquity. Shine evil and do right. Then God will hear from heaven and he'll heal our land. I'm telling you, God, there's a healing coming forth. There's a healing coming forth. Listen what it says right here. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as a garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth. Listen to that. Picture that in your mind. You know yourself when you plant a garden. I know I've been preaching for a little while. I'm trying to wrap this up. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, let us get back to hearing God's word that we'll stay all night if we have to. Hallelujah, because God is wanting to feed us in this hour.
He's wanting to deliver us, children of God. Hallelujah. But listen, you know, you said when you plant a garden, you get that ground, you get it prepared right. When you prepare that ground right, you get it broke up, you get it fouled up, you get all the big clogs out of it, and you get it broke up fine Where you, when you plant that little seed and you cover it up with that earth. It can, you know, the seed has to die before it can live. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, God is preparing our ground. He's preparing our heart. He's tilling us. Hallelujah. He's breaking up that foul ground. The way you break it up is in prayer and fasting and seeking God. Hallelujah. And He's in that seed of God is springing forth in our hearts. The seed of God is the Word of God. Hallelujah. It's springing forth in our garden. He's making us a garden that's flourishing. And when you put and prepare a garden in the natural like you are too, it'll flourish. It'll bring forth the hallelujah. And I tell you what, it'll give you much fruit. It'll give you so much fruit you can't do it all. Even if you can with all your might, hallelujah, it still overflows. You start giving it to your neighbors. You start giving it to everybody you see, hallelujah, because you don't want that fruit to perish. You want somebody to use it. Well, that's the way it is in the garden of God. Hallelujah. This fruit of God is coming forth in us. Hallelujah. We're canning all we can can. Hallelujah. With everything that is within us, but yet it's still producing. It's still flowing, overflowing. Hallelujah. Then we start giving it to everybody that we come in contact with. We're sharing this word. We're sharing his spirit. We're sharing this fire of God. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, and it says right here, it says spring forth so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all of the nations. God's people in all nations. He's preparing us and he's making us. Hallelujah. I'm talking about to them that are entering in. You that are playing church, it's passing you on by. You're going to wake up at the 11th hour and you're not going to have time to get your oil. You go on and play church. You go on and not hear the servants of God and not hear this word and let it awaken you like it ought to. You go on in your own way and see where it gets you. You be stiff-necked and hard-hearted and see where it gets you. But I'm telling you, them that are hearing, them that are humbling themselves under the mighty hand of God, them that are humbling, hallelujah, to his word and to his anointing, God is springing up in them a well of water. Hallelujah, hallelujah. His anointing their head is oil and their cup's going to overflow. He's preparing, hallelujah, a table before all our enemies. Hallelujah. They're fixing to see that God is God and he's with his people. That's the reason I said they'll be pulling at your skirt and saying, help us, man or woman of God. Help us, children of God. We know God is with you. Help us. We're languishing. We need help. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, he'll put it in our hands and in our spirit and in our heart and our mind. Hallelujah. That we'll go forth and deliver. Hallelujah. He's anointed us to go forth. Preach his word to the meek. See, the meekest ones that are going to receive it, not these old hard-hearted religious demons. They're not going to receive nothing. They're going to go in their own stiff-necked, hard-hearted way. But you better start praying that God will take a heart of stone out of you and give you a fleshly heart, a heart of flesh that can feel and they can hear. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, we'll go for it. Preaching good tidings. <laughs> Woo. I'm preaching good tidings to you today, even so, some, uh, even though some of it's been hard. But yet, it's good tidings unto you because it'll set you at liberty. No longer will you be held in captivity. No wonder will your bodies be trapped in sickness. Hallelujah. No longer will your spirit be depressed and, 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 and hovered down. God is going to set you at liberty. You listen to this word and you let it break that yoke. I declare a word of God to go out to you and every depressed spirit that's upon you that's hearing this word. It's got to Hallelujah. I'm declaring the word of God. Hallelujah. Everyone that will hear this word and receive. I see a healing springing forth in your body. Hallelujah. I see salvation coming to your children. You keep standing in the gap making up the hedge. Hallelujah. You keep hearing the word of God. You keep receiving his word and doing what he tells you to do. And you fix it to see. Hallelujah. Our garden come forth that you can't even contain all the blessings that will be holding it. Hallelujah. Both spiritually. And naturally. Am I saying God is going to give you natural mansions? No, I'm not. But he'll give you shelter. He'll give you food. He'll give you raiment. And he'll cause you to be content to whatever he blesses you to. Hallelujah. Contentment with God is great gain. Many have looked at people have run around built mansions and riding, riding around in Lamborghinis and thousand dollar suits, thousand dollar shoes saying that's blessings of God running after them because see they're running after the lust of their flesh 
That ain't showing that God is with someone. That ain't showing that God is blessing that person. It's them that are flourishing in the spirit. Them that are going forth in the manner that God sends them forth in to deliver and set free. You know, he's there to heal the brokenhearted. He'll pick up every little piece. I don't care if it's gone in a thousand pieces, a million pieces. He knows every little piece where it's at, and he'll gather it up, and he'll stick it and glue it back together by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, and he'll mend that broken heart. Them that are bruised, he'll heal that bruise. Hallelujah, he'll put a Holy Ghost Band-Aid on it. Every bar that you're looking through, that you're imprisoned in, whether it be sickness, whether it be in captivity to demonic spirits, what, whatever it be, God will set you at liberty. If you'll hear his word, he'll hear his voice. Oh, if you'll hear the call, if you're a sinner out there hearing this word, my goodness, if the spirit of the Father is drawing you, yield to that call. Yield to that call. Hallelujah. Repent wherever you are. I don't care where you are, wherever you're hearing this word. Oh, hallelujah. You don't have to be in church. I repented in my bedroom. God filled me with the Holy Ghost, and I'm talking about powerfully. He'll do you the same way. Just repent unto Him. Go to Him. Speak to Him in His through your heart to Him. Repent. Truly repent. Softly repent. Oh, and I tell you what, God will fill you up. He'll fill you so full, you'll love like you never loved. Oh, my goodness. I tell you what, when He filled me with the Holy Ghost, I love like I ain't never felt love before. He'll do you the same way. Oh, I tell you what, the Lord loves you. He wants to deliver. He wants to bring deliverance to you. There's some under my voice. You've been raised in church. And you've been in and out in church for many years. You have dabbled in things that you know you shouldn't have touched. And you've got yourself in a pitiful mess. You've got your body tore down in a way that it's going to take only a miracle of God to repair your body. And you've got your spirit in such a place that it's going to take a miracle of God to restore your spirit. Hallelujah. And, it, and there's so much trauma that has happened in your mind and your heart by the things that the devil has took you through that nearly crippled you. Not only in the natural, but in the spirit. And many have played around on God in church sitting on a pew just as lost as you can be and you're just as bound as you can be. But I'm telling you, if you'll hear this word today, it'll bring liberty to you. Because this is anointing that breaks every yoke. This anointing that God has placed on me to deliver this word, it'll deliver you. Hallelujah, it's not done by me. It's done by Him. It's done by Jesus Christ. He's the deliverer. He's the healer. He's the provider. He'll break every yoke if you'll just come to Him and release and humble. And just talk to him out of your heart. If you sin, tell him. Say, Lord, you see, I've sinned against you and you alone. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Lord. Oh, and you'll feel the, all oh, the Spirit of the Lord just wash over you. He'll forgive you. He'll wash you clean. He'll cover you by the blood of the Lamb. And I'll tell you what, that old Matt Flash man, that old creature, it'll fall away. Oh, I tell you what, it'll fall like a shackle. It'll fall like a, uh, like your hands have been bound, but all of a sudden they are set free. 